Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India If you have the relationship, for example, here if you see the property delta P is related with the delta delta G, you can relate delta delta G equal to some constant plus m into delta P. So, delta P is a property value and C is a constant because if you make a, a straight line, right, if you see the values like this, right we can use this equation to calculate delta delta g and then you can see whether you can predict. So, if you have some set of values and you frame the frame the equation and then if you have a new mutation right you know the c and m and substitute value delta p you can calculate delta delta g right you can predict stability if you have this a uh, good correlation. For example, if a single property cannot account the stability of this mutant what can we do at what the other other options? You can have many properties. We discussed about polyline properties, right? Physical, chemical, energetic, and conformational, right? You can use different properties based on multiple regression technique because you extend these uh, variables. We try to fit these equations with known values using principle of least squares, and we get the constant values, right? For actually m1, m2, and so on, right? You can add this. Once the constant values are known, the coefficients are known, then for any a uh, mutant. You calculate the properties and use in this equation to predict the stability. This is based on the multiple uh, regression technique. Then also there are different other techniques such as knowledge based prediction because you can uh, uh, obtain the information from the mutation and we can use the information for prediction. Then we can use a classification regression tool the like average assignment method, pair potentials as well as sequence based prediction. So, currently in the literature several methods are available for predicting the stability change about mutation. So, we will discuss the few methods that right, mainly the average assignment methods, pair potentials as well as how to predict from the sequence. So, if you search the protham data, you will get plenty of data. So, we look into this data that right, several you can see several data are uh, you can see the repetition. For example, if you see the alanine to valine for any particular protein, you can see this data can be obtained at different temperature or different pH or different buffers and different concentrations. In this case, you can have different data for the same mutations. You have to check carefully and first we need to remove the duplication of data. It is also possible that same data could be reported from different papers right because research is open to everyone. So, so you not necessarily that only one group should do the particular type of research because it is very competitive. So, many groups at the same time work on same proteins. In this case, when they get the data, they will publish with their uh, 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 information, they will publish. So, it is possible to have the same data from different groups in order to accumulate the data. So, in the Protham considers all the papers published in the literature because we are not sure which one we need to take. So, in this case, we have to remove the duplication in different ways. If it is unique, you can take the data as it is. If it is duplicated, you can check the data either you read the papers and see the method which method they use or see the average values. If the data are very close for example, say the deviation of less than 1 kilocal per mole right. In this case you can take the average for the particular mutant. If it is very deviated you can remove the outliers and get these average values and you can uh, use that values for constructing the model. And you can also try to predict the extreme stability on what conditions why it is extreme uh, stability that also you can try to analyze. So, now then you can also consider secondary structure as well as hardware accessibility right you, you can see this effect. If you want to do this if the structure is not available then we can either you can predict or you can discard the data. So, you can both options one we can predict the secondary structure and ASA and you can use for prediction right or if you do not have if you need only the structure information then if it is not there then you can uh, discard this data. So, finally, you can develop the data set. So, if you have the data set, right, with all the data, then we can construct 
the uh, preconceived mutations. This is the data I show for all the mutations. When you construct your data set by removing all the duplicate data and if you take only the unique data, so you will get the similar type of matrix right with your data set. What is about the how many data in this uh, matrix usually we get 20, 20 into 19, 19 this is equal to 380 mutations. As I discussed earlier, so the all the mutations are not uniform, some cases you have more number of data, some cases you have less number of data right depending upon this right the mutant type. Mainly analog mutations we have more number of data and other mutations for example, glycine to methionine is 0. So, many cases we have less number of data. The average assignment method works based on number of data. So, if we have more number of data then we will get better results, if we have less number of data in that case we do not know about the performance of that method for that particular mutant. So, here I show you the frequency of stabilizing and destabilizing mutations, we use a specific particular conditions for example, neutral pH right, if it is 7 we can take 5 to 9 and particular temperatures and finally, we collected all the data and we classify into two groups one is stabilizing and one is destabilizing. So, here if you see the numbers they are given for the destabilizing mutants and the one in the parentheses are the one for the stabilizing mutants. If you see this uh, table we can derive some conclusions for example, some mutations for example, well into alanine right where is well into alanine here most of the mutants are destabilizing. How many totally, totally how many mutants 48 right 48 44 are destabilizing that means, more than 90 percent uh, about 90 percent right. Likewise, if you can you find some other mutations which are de mainly destabilizing say W 2 alanine here have totally 10 mutants and all the 10 are destabilizing right this is also destabilizing. So, any other examples? Uh, phenyl alanine to alanine this phenyl F 2 A right yeah this is F 2 A. If you take F 2 A how many mutations 27 or 27 25 are destabilizing right like it is Y 2 A this is 23 I 2 A 37 for 37 I 2 T 8 by 8. So, from this frequency table you can see that some mutations are always destabilizing or most of the times they are destabilizing. This is unique data that you can get from this protein database with some conditions. This way the number of data are less, but you can see a trend. Like if you see the stabilizing mutations for example, you take uh, n to i. What is the case of n to i? 2 out of 2 by 2 right this 2 by 2 there are only 2 mutations uh, are stabilizing or both the both of them are stabilizing. What is k to s? This is only 1 this 1 by 1. So, here any other uh, stabilizing mutations if you see here okay, this is a 2 e to w right this out of 2 both are both are stabilizing. But the numbers are very less because it is very difficult to stabilize a protein compared to the destabilizing protein because if you make any mutations it, it will destabilize a protein. So, because it is very important to enhance the mutations this way the stabilizing mutations are less. So, this are this is the reason why the numbers are less and if you have some cases they will both stabilize and destabilize. For example, take k to m right out of 9 if you take k to m 9 4 are destabilizing and 5 to 5 by 9 are stabilizing. In this case, we do not know if you change the uh, lysine to methionine, it may stabilize or it may destabilize. So, can you tell some other example which can uh, act as both stabilizing and destabilizing? E to L, what is E to L? E to L, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, for example, valent alanine, if you have a new mutation valent alanine, you can assign okay, this destabilizing or if you find a mutation right asparagine to isolation, you can easily say that okay, this will stabilize 
on the other hand if some cases right for example, v 2 i e 2 k right what is the v 2 i this mu has v 2 i 8 and 10 8 by 18 and 10 by 18 right in this case we do not know whether stabilizing or destabilizing with the maximum number we will take stabilizing right in this case we will have a lot of negative values right. So, we assign these numbers and we can predict the stability change whether this will increase or this will decrease is very easy make a matrix now we know the stabilizing mutants and destabilizing mutants and you can make a, a table these are the mutations which is stabilize and these are the mutations destabilize if it is 0 0 then we do not have we cannot predict anything for any new mutation if we take a protein each location it can be 19 uh, possibilities right you can uh, do these mutations right and get the percentage accuracy with known data you can get about 60 to 70 percent seven up to 70 percent accuracy you can get depending on the data because in this case you will get the very high performance because these mutations are very frequently occurring mutations in this case your accuracy is very high. So, what will happen if the stabilizing and destabilizing effects even in the stabilizing effects some case some cases few of them are in the other hand right because this is one we considered all the mutants together. Now, it is possible to classify these mutants based on the secondary structure or based on solvent accessibility. If you classify this based on secondary structure we can make three classes helix, strand and coil. If you classify based on accessibility there also we can make two classes or three classes right for actual buried or partially buried or exposed and exposed right you can make three groups of secondary structure three group for accessibility then you have three matrix based on secondary structure and three matrix based on accessibility right then if the new mutations come you will check the secondary structure if this is helix then pick up from the matrix from helix if it is strand then pick up the matrix from strand or you can take this is buried if from the buried and the exposed from the buried exposed right then you can combine make nine matrices for the helix based on solvent accessibility 3 for the likewise strand and coil 3 by uh, 3 multiplied by 3 we can get uh, 9 matrices if you classify based on both secondary structure and ASA. Now, if you have new mutants first you check what is secondary structure what is solvent accessibility then accordingly pick up the data right. So, what is the disadvantage of having this classification what is the advantage of having this classification? Yeah, advantage is ok because you, even if the same mutation can stabilize and destabilize depending on the location you can classify in this case your accuracy will improve. The disadvantage if you see you do not get sufficient number of data although here it is still many zeros. If you classify then all these 20 will be in the 9 groups with less number of data. So, the data set is the problem if you have more number of data right then it is easy to classify and you can get better predictions this is a classification. Now, if you want to predict the real values right what what can we do okay. for example, if we have these uh, mutants for uh, this is uh, C to A it is 4 all the 4 we know the values take the average now this is the value okay, minus 1.9 this for the destabilizing and for the stabilizing we give the values in the parenthesis right we have the values. So, now if you have a new mutation right for example, it is uh, alanine into valine alanine into valine. So, you can say this is uh, minus 1.7 because okay, this is the highest value so put a minus 1.7 then assign all the values and you can calculate the error then how to calculate the error that is experiment minus predicted you will take the absolute because so either the exponent will be higher and uh, the predict will be higher and you add up all these values and you will be n is the total number of mutants. You take the predicted values take the absolute values and you can get this uh, n. Also you can calculate the correlation because we have the exponent values here and the predicted values also here. So, you can get this is the experimental this is the predicted. So, you can get the correlation ok. So, what is the status if you do like this? You can get around up to an accuracy of about 70 percent. You can discriminate the stabilizing and destabilizing, but if you classify with the secondary structure and ASA, you can increase this up to up to 80 percent. 
right this is the, the if you make the uh, different test then you can get up to 80 percent. Take the correlation this is about the around 0 0.5 and here also you can see the correlation about 0 0.7. So, that means if you make any method this is the minimum accuracy and correlation you can get that right, just from the assigning the method. Now, you can add more information to increase the performance right let us see what are the other different methods. So, one of the most popular methods this is based on energy because energies are very important for the different interactions and if you meet it a specific residue this will spoil the energy it will disturb the energy or improve the energy this can tell you whether this will increase the stability or decrease the stability. For getting this energetic approach so what can we do first we need to know right what will happen if a particular residue is mutated to other residues that means if you have residue A how far this is interacting with other residues how this residue is making contacts if you mutate how the contacts will change. Second aspect is what is the torsion angle for this particular residue if you change the conformation how this will change the conformation how this affects the stability of the mutations based on these aspects first we need to know we collect a set of uh, proteins for example around 4000 proteins they are uh, with uh, high resolution maybe less than 2, 2, 2 or 2.5 angstrom and the less sequence identity then we classify into different groups location of each residues based on ASA and the secondary structure right this will give you the environment then see then finally we need to do the potentials how far each residue in each secondary structure or depending on each accessibility they are making contact with the different residues. Likewise you can see the torsional potential how far the conformation will change how the conformation will affect the stability. So, once you have these values we have it for the wild type when you take the mutation you replace the residues so that what will happen if you align this value into mutated value. So, you take the tables take the new values right and then you predict the stability that delta g mutant minus delta g y because the wild type we know that when you make the mutation the changes we know from that you will calculate the delta delta g mutant minus y. Okay, I will explain how to do that first we classify the atoms in a different types here we make in 50 different types for different amino acids for example this is the uh, carbon C alpha for glycine only hydrogen is a side chain. So, here we treated this glycine uh, carbon separately for all the carbons which have the C beta we take it as one likewise a nitrogen all these nitrogens we take a separate type likewise we have different types of atoms we treat separately. So, we made into four different types of atoms based on location and the connectivity and the chemical nature. So, what is the chemical nature where this atom is located and where is connected right. So, we have the 40 different types of atom types 36, 37, 30, 40, 40 right. So, now for all these 40 types of atoms we can calculate the distance potential using the preference of the three pairs we can see the g or d this for any particular distance i and g are any specific residues right align into valine align into aspartic acid right. So, what the preference of having these two residues in contact with any specific distance say for example, 6 angstrom or 8 angstrom and here are same distance totally how many contacts using this information you can calculate the torsional potentials in the minus k t logarithmic of this probability to get the torsional potentials this will give you the distribution of residue pairs i and j at any distance d right you can optimize the distance right with using different distances finally, how this will uh, relate with the experimental data we can optimize the distance fine. So, when you get the torsion uh, distance potential is done. So, second aspect you can see the torsions right you can use this same similarly you can use same equation delta g torsion this equal to g of phi and psi for any reference points and normalize with the any reference point because they use various combinations and see what is the probability of having the particular conformation right compared with the all random conformations. Then we convert this into potential by uh, multiplying with minus a k t logarithmic of this one right you can see torsion potentials. So, two different aspects one is based on distance one is based on torsion then we combine these two right. So, here you can see uh, the uh, torsion potential and the distance potential 
right and this is a constant this is a kind of multiple regression technique. For all the cases we know the values because we know the delta g torsion and delta g the distance potential delta delta g we know. Then we use the principle of least squares so use the least square fit. This will give you this B0, BA and then beta. Once we get these values, then for any data you, you, can, you know the G and zeta, substitute the values and you can get delta delta G. Let me here show the results. For example, if you take the 1538 mutations from Protham database, right, because here you can label database. So, you can see the relationship between experiment delta G and the predicted delta G. So, you can see the accuracy about 85 percent. Accuracy means distinguishing, stabilizing and destabilizing mutants. And the correlation is exact uh, relationship between experimental and the predicted values right, this is 0 0.86. Now, the question is how this performance varies with respect to secondary structure or with respect to solvent accessibility. So, I show the data. So, we classify the ASA in different ranges 0 to 2, 2 to 30 and so on. So, these numbers also we made a classification such a way that the data can be related with the stability with the highest performance. So, accuracy it is about uh, 90 percent if it is uh, buried even the case of beta strand if it is buried then you can see more than 8 90 percent. We discussed earlier with the buried mutations you can easily relate with the heterophobicity and single uh, property can also explain the stability. But the case of exposed right single property is very difficult to explain this is the reason why we include the sequence information or structure information even if you add this structure information the, the performance is uh, only limited. So, we see here the 60 percent 60 plus solid accessibility in helix the performance is about 80 percent and the correlation is around 0 0.85 and so on. So, for the buried one you can see it is higher. This was the sheet the buried one you can uh, higher performance right here also you can see and importantly if you note, you notice here that the partially exposed case or partially buried case okay these values are uh, less compared with the completely buried or completely exposed cases. Now, you can have a server right this is the CUPSAT server right C U P S A T yeah. So, it takes the P D B I D right and you have to give the residue number and the which is the residue either we need thermal or denaturant right. We predict stability first it will automatically calculate the secondary structure and accessibility will calculate torsion angular it will give you. If there is any problem in the torsion, it will tell you the torsion is, uh, is, a, is a problem. In this case, the results are not reliable. If it is fine, then we proceed to the next step. Then finally, here it will give this is the pre prediction results. For this mutation, for this high solution, is mutated to all the 19 cases. And here the overall stability was stabilizing and destabilizing, torsions favorable, non favorable and you can see the delta predicted delta delta g. So, one stretch you can get all the values for all the 19 mutations. This case it requires this structure because we need to calculate the distance potential and the torsion potentials that require structure based on that they check the available database and then see how uh, they are attributed in terms of distance and torsion potentials and we can get the delta g values. So, the structure is not available then what to do there are two different ways one is you can do the modeling to get the structure and use the server or we are trying to get a new method just from sequence information right. Because in the average assignment method I mentioned that if this mutation is aligned to valine it can be stabilizing or destabilizing right depending upon the values. Then the, sequ the sequence information we can tell if aligned to valine and the neighboring residue is uh, aspartic acid and then this could be a stabilizing residues. So, you can make rules. Right. We, in this case, you can take all the information, wild type residue, mutation residues, and neighboring residue information. Right. All this information we, we take that, and then we can develop the rules. For example, wild type residue is alanine. Right. So A is the wild type residue. A is mutated to any other residue, and if the neighboring residue contains glutamic glutamic acid, then this is stabilizing. Right. In this case you use various options available. So, it get it could uh, this rule can predict up to accuracy the accuracy of 97 percent. Second condition 
with the wild type residue is glutamic acid this mutated to other residues and the second neighbor this is the N terminal this is the C terminal right second neighbor is this this EM then this will stabilize the protein and we have set of uh, data so we could get an accuracy of 100 percent. So, here the problem is if we have more number of mutations and we could accommodate all the mutations with less number of rules we can get better accuracy right. So, we consider about 3000 mutations and made about 100 rules but that means approximately 30 mutations some case we have, we have 100 sometimes we have less if you say data are very high like the well into RNA mutations right then we can predict with high confidence. So, now we have the server right this can uh, uh, get an accuracy of 82 percent and the correlation of 0 0.7. So, this is server it will take the mutation residue and this wild type and the mutation residue right ok this is the wild type this is mutant right. So, we have neighboring residues now we can uh, if we click predict this will tell you the whether it is stabilizing or destabilizing right this will tell you this is the stability change this is the stabilizing or destabilizing right and this already gives some information how many hydrophobic residues nearby based on this mutation and so on. So, one example I give T two twenty five U Q right here the experiment TM is 33 degrees and our prediction is also minus 0 0.97 both are destabilizing but here we know the only the uh, 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 TM values but that is anyway higher than 2, two to 3 times higher than the uh, delta G values. So, you can uh, use this server also if you the structure is not available right you can uh, use server for predicting the stability upon mutations. So, summarizing so what did we discuss today stability upon mutation right if we have which database we use Prothon. So, the data is available first you can try to relate amino acid properties with stability stability values you can get from delta G delta delta G or delta T m properties which are various properties physical yes. chemical energetic conformation properties. So, you can relate with the correlation coefficient right because delta delta G we know delta G mutant minus delta G wild properties we know delta B a mutant minus delta B wild for all mutations you can relate with the correlation. So, this will tell you which properties are important for explaining which type of mutants then we can develop different methods either from regression techniques or average assignment method or different potentials right to predict the stability. Well, also you can use different rules for predicting the stability of these mutations. So, we derived various structure based parameters sequence based parameters and these parameters have potential applications right because we discussed about regression techniques right. So, we can uh, use all these parameters for predicting the stability of mutants as well as there's other potential applications for example, to understand the folding rates or to understand how the proteins interact with other molecules and so on. So, that I will explain in the subsequent classes. Thanks for your attention.